I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president, but I think she was not qualified to be president. So let's start there. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. President Zelensky, I'm so focused on beating Putin. Yeah, so uh, some mixed feelings on President Biden's decision to stay in the presidential race after his performance at the NATO summit in D.C., especially, as you saw, confusing Donald Trump with Vice President Kamala Harris during a news presser. And then earlier in the day, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Now, today, Biden will head to Michigan, a must-win swing state in November. Meantime, Republicans gearing up for the national convention in Milwaukee. That gets underway on Monday. So joining us now to discuss is uh, Patrick Shatmer, who is a political science professor at Seattle University. Uh, professor Shatmer, thanks again for, for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me back. We'll okay, go. so uh, as you know, a growing number of Democrats have expressed concern with uh, President Biden mm -hmm. and his ability, I mean, really to just put together a cohesive you know, narrative. He did pretty well yesterday when he was talking about foreign policy, talking about his record, but it's those flubs that everybody's talking about now, and he wanted to have a big boy press conference. He did that. He, right. you know, met the press for an hour, took a lot of questions. Um, but still, the calls continue by Democrats for him to drop out of the race. Um, has a sitting president ever dropped out of a presidential race this late in the game? No, we haven't seen a sitting president drop out in the modern era this late in the race. Uh, Johnson famously withdrew early in 1968. Yeah, that was in March. Yes. Um, at the time, there was speculation because he was performing poorly in some of the... Uh, well, he wasn't participating in the primaries. That wasn't required then, but uh, anti-war candidates was. But later it came out he was facing health issues, and so he decided to step away. But that was um, well before any sort of convention. Historically, conventions were where you would settle contentious debates. Uh, Adelaide Stevenson mm -hmm. wa uh, wound up being a consensus candidate in several... Uh, ones in the 50s, for example. But in this modern era where uh, presidents have been nominated by the voters, we've never seen one this late, and certainly we've never seen someone uh, a push to move, a move to push the candidate out after the voters have spoken. Yeah, so so 81 years old. The, the, the other thing, the government is operating fairly smoothly, but you consider his age, you consider the division mm -hmm. among the Democratic Party, calls by some high-level Democrats for him to get out of the race, a low approval rating right now from where you sit. Should Biden drop out of the race? Well, ultimately, it's going to be his call. Um, in a lot of ways, I think there is one historical event that's sort of similar to this. We're seeing the Democrats uh, deal with a poll-related crisis in the same way that the Republicans were dealing with a poll-related crisis after the Access Hollywood tapes came out in 2016 for President Trump. Now, that was in early October, but we saw uh, about a dozen or 18 or so Republicans come forward and call for him to step down as well. So when it comes to this sort of pressure, uh, this is something that we uh, that Biden can look to that, for example. Um, it would be really risky for the Democrats to push Biden out at this uh, time. Um, it would certainly amplify any internal conflict. But it is the case that the president does seem to be behind in the polling right now. And uh, the, opp the chance for him to win is at best a toss-up, if not a slight favor for Trump at this point. Okay, so VP Kamala Harris, you have California Governor Gavin Newsom, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, they're among the names that are being mentioned right. as a possible replacement for Joe Biden. Is there another Democrat out there that has a better chance of beating Donald Trump in November? Again, the polling is sort of shaky. We can see some Democrats, particularly Vice President Harris, doing better than Biden in some polls, but not necessarily in others. But because of the nature of our electoral system, it's really going to be down to who can perform better in the swing states, and in particular, who Pennsylvanians, Michiganders, and Wisconsinites really uh, can connect with. And the question is whether or not a California senator can connect better than a Delaware former senator. And, and Newsom is, is not exactly a slam dunk in California either. I mean, he has a lot of opposition in his home state. Now, Trump's poll numbers have improved since the debate, leading in every swing state mm -hmm. now, according to most polls. Um, what do you expect to see? What tone do you expect to see from the RNC? Well, President Trump's uh, last two conventions have been 
interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's a way to put it. Um, and I expect that we'll see a lot of the same tone that we saw in 2020 in particular um, play out again in 2024. A real emphasis on putting attention on immigration, on continuing struggles of voters dealing with the inflation hangover from the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we're going to see a drumbeat on crime again. And uh, Trump is going to focus again on this message of his personal persecution representing sort of a threat to democracy and trying to cast himself as the defender of American democracy. He is expected to announce a running mate at the convention. Do you have any idea who it might be? I mean, there have been a few front runners thrown out there, but ideologically, um, who do you see as a, as a really good fit in that role? Well. Historically, we've used the vice president uh, sort of as a way to balance the ticket and to give a consolation prize to the main parts of the party coalition that didn't win the nomination. So you would imagine that Trump would be looking at someone who would help to consolidate the center because he's got the right of the party more or less locked up. Um, but we saw him continuing to struggle with the so-called Nikki Haley voters throughout the primaries, and he's going to want to shore that up. So he's going to look for someone who has a little bit more moderate of a profile, I think. Okay. Now, considering he asked Mike Pence to break the law and decertify the last election, um, what will be expected of Trump's VP and, and other top officials in a Trump White House? Well, I think the president is putting a premium on loyalty when he's looking at who would be staffing a future Trump administration. Um, that was sort of a hallmark of how he ran his business in New York. That was something he emphasized repeatedly in interviews and in his books. Um, so I would expect that he would be thinking that uh, a person who's going to toe the line and go to bat for him is going to be someone that he would want uh, standing next to him on that podium. Political science professor Patrick Shatmer from Seattle University, thank you so much for your time once again. We appreciate it. I love coming by, Bill.